Hello, welcome to a little tutorial on how to use Teacher Kit. Now I wanted to uh, video record this but I couldn't get a program to work on my iPad so we're going to go through some pictures and show you how to use this device. Now if you want to add a classroom what you do is at the top left there's a add classroom button and you press it. Once you press the button you can either click new class or import a class. We're going to click on new class. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of options that you can use uh, with New Class. You can add title, you can add a code for people to uh, use in order to access the classroom. You can make a category, you can add the starting date and the ending date, you can make a color just for fun, or you can add a description. Now, it's all pretty self explanatory right there, so we're just going to go ahead and go on to the next part. And right next to our original class that we had up is our tutorial classroom. They'll all stack right next to each other as you continue to add classes to your teacher kit on your iPad. Now, this is what your classroom looks like when you start it off. Now, you can add, add stuff. There are options in the bottom on how you can add things. And there's also a add student option in the middle and the top right. We'll go over how to use both of those. And this home page shows you, like, the average attendance, the average grades, and the number of students within the class. And then there are more options all over the page. We will go over them in these next few steps. Now here's a students tab. The only thing you need in order to make a student as part of your class is to put their first name and their last name. Now there's a bunch of optional information just like uh, phone number, email, Skype, and same things for the parental information that you know if you want to contact this parent there's all their information at the bottom. And you can add notes. All that is up to you as a teacher. Now here's what my test classroom looked like. As you can see, I have the students switched up into groups of three. You can hold on to one student at a time and move them around the classroom as you wish. This is your seating chart. Now if you can see at the bottom, there are a bunch of buttons. We'll be going over each one of those buttons individually. But because of the way this program works and because I can't couldn't have made a video, we're going to have to do it kind of long. Um, the averages are broken down automatically for you. This is what your homeroom is going to look like once you make uh, your students up, so that's pretty much it here. Now we're going to move on to the next button. So right next to the roster button where we just were is a timetable button. Now this will automatically be generated due to the attendance that you make for your lessons and how you do the lessons and how you title them. But these are an example of what a timetable is going to look like, and it's going to just give you a quick attendance, and that's about it. Now if you were to click on any of the uh, timetable green slots, like how yeah, you saw lesson one, it would have brought you over to this next button, the attendance section. And as you can see here for lesson one, all of these students were present here. But if you want to add a new lesson, all you do is click on start a new lesson. And when you record a new lesson, all of the students in your classroom are going to be marked as unrecorded. Now to change that, whether they're present or absent, you just click on their name until it says present or absent, and it will be automatically recorded in your teacher kit. Now as you can see, this is how you would set up your classroom attendance, by just clicking and marking who's absent and who's not. And when we, move, we will move on to the next button. The next section for this app is the behavior section, where you can write down and comment or use general settings that are with this to mark good and negative behavior within your classroom. Now, if you click on a student, let's say Godzilla here, for example, you have a, an up thumb, a down thumb, and a middle marker. Now, each three have their own options, and we will show you first what the middle marker does. Now, this middle marker is your behavior list for the student, and it shows the overall behavior that this student has had throughout the year. It gives the basic uh, descriptions that come with it. You could click on them. If there's more details, they will be listed, and it gives you the time and date that the incident happened. If you instead clicked on the green thumbs up, you'll see all the good behaviors. Now there's a general, there's homework on time, good progress, and participating. And as you see lower down, it gives you the time and date and an option to write a description of what actually happened that you're writing a good behavior mark for this student. Now if you were to have instead of click the green thumbs up to click the red thumbs down you'll see all the negative behavior with a general chatty fighting and homework issues 
And then again, just like the good behavior, the bad behavior has an option to write in specific details and the time and day of what you're reporting on. Now one of the last buttons we're going to go over is the uh, grading section. And as you can see, there is the uh, total amount of grades. Uh, over at the right, there's the average of all the students in the class. Up at the top, you can see what the homeworks are, and what the assignments are, and how much they weigh for the class. And under that, you can see the total score and how much out of the total score all the students received. And we will continue to go over how you use the grading section. Now, if you want to edit one of your currently graded projects or sections, or add one, you would click on the configure grades up at the top right. And this is what you would see. And it gives you the basic rundown of everything, an auto distribution to make everything equal out among the class, so you wouldn't have one assignment that's 10% and another that's 100. That would even out to two assignments to be 50% of the class, uh, both. And then you can go ahead and add a new grade, a new thing to grade. So we're going to add something. Once you add a new grade, a uh, new graded item, this is what it's going to look like. You can put the title, the date of when you received it or when you issued it, the max grade that's going to come with it, and the weight <coughs> that it's going to hold for the entire class. And then you can pump that in however you feel and add grades to it. And if you add a new graded item to your currently existing classroom, you will see that it's completely blank. They all have zeros out of whatever you set to. Well, not zeros, just uncalculated grades. And it has affected the total average of that student. Now you can go ahead and add grades to this new item. So if you want to edit somebody's grades or just add a new grade to a new assignment, all you do is click on it and type in the number value. Now, let's say, you know, you have a grade over 100, and you accidentally put in, like, 980 instead of 98. You're going to have to click out of that grade, and then click back into it, and then type in the 98 correctly. And then once you're done adding in all your grades, it should look like this, just like you did before. And the ad total average for your student's grade within that class should be automatically recalculated to fit in this new assignment. Or, if you change something, it should automatically recalculate your changes to their total average. Now, the last two sections of this app are the reports and the call-out sections. This is the reports section. It gives you nice graphics of, every, of the total summary of your class. The grade book, the seating chart, the class summary, uh, grade distribution, your grade counts, the behavior, and overall attendance. Now, if you click any of these sections, you're prompted to pay for a subscription, either 4 bucks a month or 40 bucks for the year. Now, I have not explored this option because I don't feel like spending money on this app, so I'm sorry to say that I don't know how much this part of the app does besides that it makes nice graphics for your whole classroom. It gives a good summary. It should, I think the grade distribution is one of the best parts because it shows the average and the maximum and the minimum of the grades in the class. The attendance is also pretty good because it kind of gives you a nice average of how often students are absent or not. The call-out section prompts you to a new app that works with this. And I'm sure it works well, but I haven't explored that app. But that is it here. That's the end of the tutorial for the teacher kit. My best suggestion for learning how to use this device would be just to play with it. It's a great little app. Um, I would use it within the classroom, and I think it's worthwhile. It's free besides those two uh, subscriptions I talked about. So thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.